Honorable Wimpy, you are now recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary and uh, the OTC family, good evening. I hope you enjoyed your dinner. <laughs> anyway, Class A, Your Honor. <laughs> if you remember in the last budget hearing in plenary, um, we asked from the Bicol block when the PNR will reach the Bicol region. Do you remember your answer before? Through the chairperson? It was the first Probably quarter. The chairperson could help me. The first quarter of yeah, what the, year? Y y there's a promise that uh, it will be functional by first quarter of 2014. If That's I'm not right. mistaken. Yes. Um, now we are inviting all of you to join us in our Peña Francia festivities. It's September 12, the translation, and September 20 is the fluvial. But I doubt if the PNR can be utilized by the DOTC family, if you will come. Can we ask the PNR general manager to respond to when the real date would be that the PNR would reach the Bicol region? Um, yeah. Actually, well, actually the, the GM of PNR really wanted to operate the trains for the Peña Francia. Okay. Um, my real concern is safety. Uh, yes. We could we could all go there and pray, but uh, I really pray that uh, no accident happens. But uh, I, I will go by the wisdom of the PNR GM. He, he's a rail expert, and uh, we should listen to him. Yes, but um, um, the point is there was a commitment in plenary. Yeah. Now just like we would just want to uh, we would just want to get an update on why yeah. there was a commitment and why there was a failure to comply. G uh, I think it was GM, last year it was GM. Regardless is the previous owner. Yeah, the I, previous one. Right? So he was the one who committed it. Not, not, not GM. Right. Yeah, we can hear from GM. Do we change again the GM? Your Honor. In as much as I wanted to resume the operations of uh, uh, Bicol Express, uh, last Jumpo, we had a test run together with uh, four uh, congressmen. Uh, we successfully went on round trip uh, all the way to uh, Ligaspe in spite of many bumpy portions. Running at 40 kilometers per hour. Yes, that's correct. Very slow. Kaya... Makakarating po tayo ng Bicol sa anytime now and save. Of course, we have to sacrifice the speed restriction and the comfortability of ride. So, uh, in-schedule po natin sana na ngayong September. Ano po yung nagpatagal? Bakit hindi nakapag-comply doon sa original commitment ng first quarter of 2014? At tinanong ko pa yung chairman natin kung kailan yun. E sabi niya, March. Uh, Your Honor, uh, hindi po ako yung nag-commit nung... noon. Kaya nga, hindi ko naman sinabi ikaw yung nag-commit. Sabi ko, ba't hindi nakapag-comply sa commitment at kailan talaga siya makakapag-comply? Uh, Nandun si Secretary kung gusto mo siya ituro. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, yeah, siguro so kami nagpalit ng GM. <laughs> okay. Uh, Your Honor, uh, gusto ko lang iparam sa inyo yung aming seriousness to really run the vehicle because we uh, DOTC has given us a 40 million budget to hire a consultant to validate or certify that the uh, plan uh, uh, Bicol uh, run is, uh, will be safe and... Uh, Umaabot na po ba siya sa Alabang, yung uh, PNR? Yes, we are uh, running up to Mamatid, Kabuyao. Um, gaano po kalayo yung terminal sa Alabang papuntang PNR? Ilang kilometro po ba yun? 
Yeah, I am asking this, Your Honor, because um, coming from the Department of Transportation and Communication, you mentioned in your presentation that you will improve project development and implementation. It was read by uh, Yusek Limkauko. Synchronize planning and budgeting. Coordinate and integrate infrastructure initiatives. Climate change adaptation and disaster reduction, risk reduction management. Now I will have an interplay of all these concepts because I will connect you to the other lines of or other agencies of the DOTC. Okay. So gaano kalayo yung terminal ng Alabang papunta sa PNR? Uh, Your Honor, yung uh, tutuban to Alabang. No, 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 no. Bus terminal, kung saan pinapatigil nyo ngayon yung lahat ng bus galing Bicol Region, papunta doon sa PNR. Anong oras dumadating yung mga pasahero galing sa Bicol Region, isama mo na yung Region 8, at pinapatigil nyo sa Alabang, hindi nyo na pinapadiretso ng Kubaw, saan sila sasakay mula doon, kasi ang lumalabas ngayon, your policies and your design cost economic disruption as far as the Bicolanos and Region 8 folks are concerned. It was a, uh, it cost us gross inconvenience. It also cost us unnecessary expense. And I don't know if you have an answer to all these queries, requests from the boss of the president from these regions, Region 5 and Region 8. Because it is important for us that when you make a commitment, especially in plenary, you have to comply. And you give us a more definite and more acceptable answer why you failed to comply because these are all connected. Now you want the buses to stop. Do not enter. You only stay in Alabang. You cannot go beyond that. Otherwise, buses will be fined by 1 million pesos of the LTFRB. So, what are you doing to the Bicol region and to Region 8? Hindi ka umandar, hindi naapektohan din yung disaster risk reduction management policy ninyo dahil hindi kayo nakatulong sa PNR dun sa pag-rehab ng Region 8 dahil hindi kayo umaandar. So, I would want the committee to examine all the policies especially on integration and interconnection of the DOTC because it seems that you have one head but you're disaligned all over. Now, how can we explain to the Bicolanos rural folks na nagbubus dahil walang PNR na, hops, hindi na naman kayo pwedeng pumasok, magbayad kayo ng tol kung gusto nyo magpasundo uh, sa alabang. Tapos tinatanong ko ngayon kung gaano kalayo yung terminal papunta sa PNR, anong oras yung mga pwedeng biyahe, meron bang available, anong oras yung dating ng mga pasahero para makagaan sa traffic. Because I know the answer of LTFRB is para makapagpagaan ng traffic sa Metro Manila. But did you plan it well? Did you ask the stakeholders? You have the likes of Governor Salceda, who is a stalwart of the Liberal Party, asking the Supreme Court to stop all this. And worse, you have members of Congress, especially the chairman of the Committee on Transportation and Communication, who's from Bicol. And you are doing this to us. Now, can we have a more acceptable, reasonable explanation from the DOTC family on what are the remedies for the bosses of the president from Region 5, Region 8. Remember, nung hindi kayo umandar, nasira din ninyo yung Maharlika Highway. Dahil overloaded yung lahat ng mga papuntang takloban, yung mga truck, hindi kayo tumutulong. Na-delay din ang pag-repair ninyo ng airport ng takloban. Because sabi nyo, matagal mag-mobilize ang contractor. Kaya lahat ng mga upuan doon sa DPW8, doon sa airport, ang marka DPWH. Noong December 18, ang magmobilize pa yung contractor ninyo, January. Why so slow? Why disorganized? Why not integrated? And we are dealing with the bosses of the president. 
Pinabayaan ba namin kayo sa eleksyon ng, ng Region 5 at Region 8? Di ba ang daming liberal members? What have, you, what have you done to us? Also, there was a commitment to give us a technical study, technical report, or the result of the airport, uh, which was my concern in the last plenary hearing. Can I get it? And now you have the floor, Mr. Secretary. Yes, sir. We would gladly uh, uh, share the report to you and give you a, a copy of, of that airport. Uh, as regards to the, the decision to create a, a, a terminal in Muntilupa as an interim, this really stemmed from the fact that we had to crack down on, on Colorum. I, I do admit there was a, uh, a shortage or a shortcoming in terms of consultation. But uh, again, we, we, DOTC is not the only operating department in terms of transport and traffic. As you know, MMDA and the LGUs of, Man of uh, Metro Manila are very active in this. In fact, we've, we've gone to some uh, arduous sessions for this. We, we would have rather taken our time to really study this, but they were also pressuring LTFRB and DOTC to come up quickly because their impression was we were all tolerating Colorum, Your Honor. But uh, again, as I've told you, we will uh, go down hard on Colorum. Uh, I, I do admit there's a, a great distance between the Alabang bus terminal and your PNR. Our real solution here is the ITS PPP South that we have. This will be located in FTI. In that way, it is clearly and completely intermodal. Buses will terminate in FTI, and the rail of PNR we, will be directly adjacent to the terminal. Again, we are opening this bid in October. It will take us October. one and a half to two years to, to construct. And uh, You mean it will be fully operational by October? No, Your Honor. We will open the bids. This is the start of the procurement. Wow. Construction is a one and a half to But you to have two LTFRB years. already telling them not to enter, otherwise one million um, penalty will be charged against all these bus operators. Is that correct? Uh, if I may, uh, Your Please. Honor, uh, there are 3,750 buses, Your Honor, coming from uh, Southern uh, Luzon, from Bicol and Visayas, uh, Your Honor. Okay. Out of this, Your Honor, that so mas dumami pa pala. out of this that mm. will be terminated in South Station are only 236, mm -hmm. 236 uh, only. And these 236, Your Honor, are those that have end points in metro, in, uh, here in Metro Manila, generally described as Metro Manila, Your Honor. The reason for this, that, that the reason why we want that the LTFRB, MMDA, and the Metro Manila mayors decided that they should have only a specific endpoint so that they could not go anywhere. Uh, that is in relation and in connection with the implementation of the one million penalty, three months apprehension, three months uh, suspension, and cancellation of their franchise. Your Honor. We wanted them to have a specific location within Metro Manila where they could terminate. But these 236 buses only, Your Honor, are only part of those coming from Bicol, from Visayas, and from uh, Batangas, Your Honor. Some, let's say there are a certain bus, Your Honor, has 10 franchises. Yun po mga ibang prangkisa po nito ay nakakatuloy pa po ito ng Cubao. Dahil yung prangkisa na yun, ang end route po nun ay talagang Cubao. Meron din po yan, ng prangkisa niyan, eh, Pasay, LRT Buendia. Nakakatuloy po rin po yung iba doon. Maaari yung isa niyang franchise. Eh, so happy that nung nakalang, nakarang mga dekada po na ang naibigay sa kanyang prangkisa ay Metro Manila, Yun po lang yung talaga masasama siya dun sa 236. And we have the list. It was published, Your Honor. And there were massive consultations with the bus operators regarding this, uh, Your Honor. They were consulted, uh, the chairman and the president of the... Uh, so it was limited to the bus operators? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, yes. Is that acceptable to the secretary and to the president? Uh, as we have said, Your Honor, these uh, are uh, only affecting about 236 out of uh, the 3,000. So there are still 3,500. That could enter from Bicol region. 
to Cubao, to Pasay to LRT, either to Sampalo, to all that, to yun pong mga garahi po, terminal po nila, nakakadiretso pa rin po sila. Yung mga 3,500 more or less po yun. Nakakadiretso na pa rin. Yes. Opo. So, are you, how, yung 236, yun lamang yung walang franchise na pwedeng pumasok? Hindi po. Kabaw? May franchise po sila, Your Honor, pero Metro Manila po nakadescribe. We have here, Your Honor, the list. We can uh, specify here kung sino po yung mga yun. Sige nga. I, I can uh, give you an example. Kasi there. I will uh, have this um, conversation or this hearing be heard. And so you will have, uh, you can have an explanation to the Bicolano folks affected by these policies of yours. PNR not running, stopping uh, Alabang uh, bus, uh, buses from Bicol to, to only stay in Alabang. What percentage would be affected? Ano mga bus lines lang ang pwedeng pumasok so that the, con the, the riders, the public, would know which one to buy and which one not to buy. At kung pwedeng maipakita nyo na rin yung maaring advisory ninyo doon sa mga nais magbiyahe kung aabot lang ng alabang papano sila sasakay at aabot doon sa gusto nilang puntahan yeah, yes sir we will uh, yes sir we will, Thank you. we will do that po yeah. Thank you. no no give it now this is your opportunity to to give the advisory so, yung we have uh, the MC or uh, the MC that we have published please make it understandable the memorandum to... circular that we have published yes Honor. i understand this mc this the department orders joint department orders or whatever you have you call it make it understandable please to the riding public how what is the advice from the ltfrb from the pnr general manager na para ma, ma, mabawasan yung economic disruption mabawasan yung unnecessary expense and the very gross inconvenience that all these cost We we will uh, we have directed your honor among the provincial buses coming from uh, the southern uh, Luzon to properly put their signboards where they should be terminating in Metro Manila. Sorry, sorry, sir. Ha, um, magaling po ba kayo magtagalog o English talaga kayo? Pwede po kahit sa tagalog na lang tayo sa game. So ang 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 bilin po namin sa mga provincial bus operators, maglagay po sila ng signboard and they are required to put one. Kung saan po sila, let us say po, Albay to Cubao. Kung yun po ang terminal niya, dapat ilalagay po sa signboard Cubao to Albay. Yun naman pong mga papunta lamang doon sa Alabang, dapat ilagay po nilang Cubao to Alabang para yun pong mga sasakay, alam po nila kung saan ang terminal po noon at kung saan sila po bababa. Pagdating naman po doon sa Alabang, yung mga 236, which it's not actually 200 36 dahil marami pong non-operating na rin daw po sa mga ito. Mayroon naman po mga sasalo ng mga city buses na papunta po yan ng Cubao, Monumento, Novaliches, Fairview. Sasalo po sa kanila, magkalapit lang po yon, lalakad lang po yung ating mga kababayan Gano at ihahatid po sila. Gano'n kalapit po? Para lang ma-picture ma nila. 15 to 20, 20 meters, meters po. Meters, very good. Opo. Okay. Tapos? So, tapos sa... Uh, Bababa po sila. On the matter po nung fair, nung adjustment po ng fair, mayroon po kaming public hearing sa Ligaspi po, September 5, 2 o'clock, sa Friday po, okay. regarding nung adjustment ng mga fares. Dahil po maapektuhan nga yung mga, yung dating mga nakakatuloy ng Cubao, hindi na po sila mga kadiretso. Kaya may, may hearing po kami roon na ikakandak to redetermine and readjust yung mga fair po sa mga basis na affected. Pwede bang mag-hearing din kayo sa Naga City? Hindi, hindi ko po distrito yun, pero marami pong nandun, Peña Francia festivities ngayon. Uh, yun po nung nag-usap po kami ng mga bus operators, Naga and Ligaspi po yung pinagpilian, ang naging uh, desisyon po at uh, naging suggestion nung po ng lahat. Ganapin na daw po sa Ligaspi dahil gitna daw po yun ng mga hindi po ako familiar sa lugar, yung mga nanggagaling po ng mga albay. At Sorsogon. Sorsogon, Cheta. So parang doon na daw po kang namin gagawin, sir. Notices have been already uh, sent and public It was already published po. But in your hearings, in your consultations, in your planning, you did not include the PNR? Nakita po namin, uh, Your Honor, yon Pero medyo talaga pong malayo yung South Station. Tatawid po siya ng Alabang Sapote. Pagkatawid mo po ng Alabang Sapote, kailangan ka pang mag-walkway. Uh, uh, Then sa may, sa may harapan na po yun ng... Uh, para Manuel at sa likod. So medyo po talagang... Uh, Gaano kalayo po yun sa estimate po ninyo? More 
Yeah, the South Station. Yes. <laughs> Kulang kulang po siguro sir uh, your honor ng isang kilometro po. No shuttle available na pwedeng magamit from Kasi sinasabi natin na kwenta niyo na rin po ba yung expenses na madadagdag dito sa mga changes na to. I, I assume you have uh, pag alabang ba ang tigil e eh, babawas ba yung pamasahe at yung bababawas ba ay eh, pwedeng ma-compensate doon sa um other schemes or alternate uh, system na i-impose ninyo? Uh, yes, sir. Ano, yun nga po yung mga include po namin doon sa pagdidetermine namin ng bagong uh, rates po nila nung mga 236 that will be terminated doon sa Alabang. So, yun po yung aming uh, gagawin once we decide kung magkano po yung hanggat Alabang, magkano dapat lang ang bayad sa bus para makompensate yung mga additional expenses po nila. Now, in the meantime that you're implementing this and magkakaroon ng bidding sa September 5, October pa, o baka pwedeng uh, i-hold yung muna yung pag implement ng ganito? Or would you insist on uh, pursuing your system that we feel really lacked the consultation that is required? In this, uh, uh, we situation. are reviewing it, uh, Your Honor. Uh, the good chairman of the Committee on Transport already talked to me regarding this matter also, Your Honor. We are looking also into yung pong mga ibang pamamaraan na uh, pwede namang makaderecho po yung mga affected na mga bus uh, companies na ito kung madaling araw po sila dumarating uh, na hindi naman makakadagdag ng congestion. Then kung sabi naman po nila na right away, aalis namin naman din. Pusila. So yun pong mga bagay na yun. We will adjust, restudy and adjust and listen po. Kasama po namin kayo para mapag-aralang mabuti kung ano pong mas uh, maganda dito sa mga affected lang na 236 nga po. Yun. Can we ask the PNR manager last kung ano naman yung contribution ninyo? Kasi hindi naman kayo umaabot ng Bicol eh pwede naman kayo umaabot ng Alabang. Y Your Honor, katulad po nang nasabi ko, Maabot po kami hanggang uh, mamatid Kabuyao. And uh, in uh, October, we will go hopefully up to Kalamba. Uh, uh, Mr. Offer, General Manager, with the permission of the DOTC Secretary, uh, baka pwede niyong pag-usapan kung paano pa kayo mag magsama-sama no, sa pamilya ninyo. Kasi uh, nagpapatong-patong na rin yung... Hindi naman natin siguro sabihing atraso at inconvenience na naibigay nyo doon sa amin, sa Bicol Region, Region 8, etc. But um, I'd, I'd like to yield to the uh, Chairman of the Committee on uh, Transportation Communication for my uh, remaining yes, time. Yes, for the remaining time. Uh, the Chair would like to recognize our uh, Chairman of the Committee on DOTC, Chairman uh, Cesar Sarmiento. Yeah, with the permission of the Chair, Uh, thank you very much. My, my uh, name was mentioned by uh, Congressman Fuente Bella. Being a Bicolano myself, uh, yesterday afternoon I uh, entertained several bus operators airing their complaints against the issuance of Memorandum Circular 2014-15, prohibiting the entry of uh, buses coming from Southern Luzon, Visayas, entering uh, uh, Metro Manila. But prior to MC 2014-15, uh, a month ago, Memorandum Circular 2014-10 was issued by LTFRB uh, concerning the guidelines on the conduct of rationalization of routes of provincial public utility bus services, which allowed the shortening or lengthening of their routes by filing a petition for modification of routes. Because uh, the main reason for these circulars are intended to uh, stop, put an end to the existence of Colorum and to decongest uh, primarily EDSA. And uh, before, ang franquisa ng mga franchise, ng mga bus operators, naka-indicate like for instance, Tabaco or Albay to Metro Manila. Now, LTFRB would want to rectify the situation by uh, 
being specific at specific on the endpoints. For instance, tobacco to Pasay, tobacco to Cubao. And for that reason, uh, MC 2014-10 uh, allowed bus operators to modify their routes, either to choose Kung Pasay or Cubao. Now, several weeks thereafter, yung MC 2014-15 was issued prohibiting the entry of buses coming from the Bicol region and Visayas and ang endpoint na sa Alabang. Even if the various petitions for modification of routes have been filed and without, without being heard. So in short po, uh, uh, kulang po sa pag-aaral, causing a lot of inconvenience, uh, lack of sufficient consultation with the stakeholders, not only with the uh, riders, but to the public, to the bus operators also. And more so, uh, kulang sa pag-aaral in a sense that these buses coming from the Bicol region ay dumadating po sa Metro Manila sa patay ng mga oras na hindi ho walang traffic. Dumadating ng alauna, alas dos, alas tres ng madaling araw. Kaya uh, the Bicol Block just signed a resolution uh, because of uh, uh, this concern entitled Resolution urging to defer the implementation of Memorandum Circular Number 2014-15 issued by LTFRB, which has prejudiced the people of the Bicol region, and of course, uh, Region 8 as well. So this particular resolution was already filed and signed by all of the uh, Bicol, uh, Bicol Block. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, in the meantime that uh, the the implementation of this memorandum circular, uh, which took effect August 29, I think, is causing a lot of inconvenience not only to the riding public, but uh, causing economic dislocation to the bus operators and to the Bicol region. And for that reason, uh, Governor uh, Joey Salceda filed a case uh, with the Supreme Court uh, for the issuance of TRO. And... Uh, MC 2014-15 identified three areas identified as possible terminal stations. Uh, isa sa north, one doon sa coastal, and the other one interim dyan sa Alabang. Now, ang medyo uh, ikinatatampo ng mga Bicolano, uh, nag-issue kaagad ng Memorandum Circular 2014-15, samantalang yung mga buses come from the north, if wedding, they could freely uh, enter Metro Manila because wala pang na-identify na station for specifically for buses coming from the north. So with that, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, exercising uh, uh, supervision and control over LTFRB, uh, the people from the Bicol region and as chairman of the Committee on Transportation, uh, fully aware of uh, the interest of the Filipinos would like to ask the department for the deferment of the implementation of Memorandum Circular 2014-15. Mr. Secretary, just an addendum before I end. Um, please forgive us for being more demanding because um, I don't know kung ilang taon pa tayo magiging secretary sa DOTC pero humihingi po kami ng mas... Um, mas maraming oras mula sa inyo at sa inyong mga tao para pagplanuhan nyo naman kung paano mas mapapagaan yung buhay sa Region 5 and Region 8. Especially, nakakatulong po yung Region 5 sa rehabilitation ng Region 8. Uh, yes, Your Honor. We'll, we'll look into it, uh, Congressman Sarmiento. But uh, I've, I've, I've picked up, there's already a, a identified proposed site in the north. Uh, hindi naman tayo magpapalamang sa, sa norte. Eh. At uh, if I could share with you, we really started with this to really crack down on Colorum. Doon no kami nagsimula eh. And we anticipated this will be a complicated process. Nagkaton, in Congress, you have your NCR block. 
NCR Block already anticipating that our clear direction is to crack, crack down on uh, Colorum. They're now also pushing for decongesting Metro Manila. So I, I, I would idea. suggest if the Bicol Block and the NCR Block could also sit down Mr. and uh, enlighten all of us because the consensus that we could build with LTFRB, DOTC, Bicol Block, NCR Block could uh, come out as a, as a good solution for all of us, Your Honor. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify, ang gusto namin mas mapag-aralan at malagay ninyo yung pwesto nyo sa um, nararanasan ng mga ordinaryong riders o yung mga sumasakay dito sa mga bus. At kung pwedeng mas detalyado yung mga uh, polisiya ninyo para matugunan yung mga kakulangan. Because you have to admit, we are addressing the gaps. We are not telling you not to go after the colorum. We are not telling you not to serve. We are not telling you na wag niyong pagsilbihan yung mga taga-NCR. Sinasabi lang namin, pakidetalyahan nga. If you'd notice, yung approach ko nga, ipapano e, pa mga katulong yung isang hindi ninyo isinama doon sa pagplano ninyo na pwedeng makatulong tulad ng PNR. Kasi kulang po tayo sa... Tinitingnan nyo kasi ang issue, kaya nga, nung umpisang sinasabi ko sa kanina, integrate, interconnect. Konektado siyang lahat at kung may problema tayo sa kolorum, wag lang LTFRB ang pwedeng makasolusyon nito. Baka pwede pang makatulong yung PNR ninyo, baka pwede pang makatulong yung LRT, MRT ninyo, kasi lahat po yan konektado at baka pwedeng may adjust nyo yung mga oras, yung mga pamasahe, para mas matugunan yung sinasabi naming unnecessary expense, inconvenience, at economic disruption. That is what we are trying to say to state here. We are not we are not saying na okay lang yung dati. Sinasabi natin kung pwede, bigyan niyo pa ng sapat na panahon kasi kulang na kulang po sa detalye yung pag-aaral at konsultasyon na ginawa sa aming um, observasyon. Ganun po ang nangyari. Yes, Your Honor. We'll, co we'll comply. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, one uh, minute. Chairman Sarmiento. Yeah, I have uh, several issues, but uh, uh, I have taken the liberty of identifying issues and concerns which are vital in advancing the state of transportation situation in the Philippines in my capacity as Chairman of the Committee on Transportation and as an individual passionate about making the right of, for every Filipino efficient, convenient, affordable, secure, and safe. I have uh, with me the issues and concerns covering, uh, involving the OTC, Philippine Coast Guard, Land Transportation Office, LTFRB, CAAP, CAB, MIA, SIAC, Mactan Cebu, in Philippine Aerospace Development Corporation, TRB, PPA, Marina, PNR, LRTA, North Rail, OTS, and uh, Metro Transit. So I hope, uh, Mr. Secretary, that this could be given serious consideration. I have listed and crafting your policies as the leader of one of the most important agencies in this country. Keep in mind that I, along with the Committee on Transportation, are your partners in advancing the state of transportation in the Philippines. So I am submitting this to you, uh, Mr. Secretary, for your uh, serious consideration. Yes, uh, and just to sum up, we are I not am. just complaining, we are also providing or suggesting solutions. Uh, Chair, I, I fully agree and uh, fully appreciate your concern and uh, suggestions.